What is up, Job Squad? How you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of Universe Mode, episode number 11. It is time for Halloween Havoc. I know it has been quite a while since we've done Universe Mode. Trust me, I am very aware of that. If you guys have not watched any of my latest videos, um, I started a new job. And so uh, getting used to the new schedule and like, you know, getting my bearings straight, getting my feet under me uh, has been has been a little tough. Um, but uh, it's more so just like when I come home, I just want to like rest uh, more than anything instead of record videos. But uh, I'm getting back into the swing of things now. And so we are back with universe mode and we're going to get through Halloween Havoc. And hopefully we're going to keep this ball rolling and keep things moving here on the channel. So let's go ahead and let's run through some matches. This is probably going to be broken up in three parts but they will be um most likely back to back to back days so uh if this is monday next episode will be tuesday and the following episode will be wednesday um that's how i'm hoping to do it uh if that's not how it happens then something went wrong and uh, it wasn't able to happen and i apologize for that in advance um but anyways so let's go ahead let's run through the matches that are on the card for the show for you guys and then uh we'll get into some matches and uh, and get into some action and i really hope that my arena saved because that would be bad if it didn't but uh i guess we'll find out because this game is a game where that's definitely something that would possibly happen where it wouldn't save anyways okay let's get into it all right pete dunn dolph ziggler they've been going back and forth man they want this Intercontinental title, and they want it bad. They've been going back and forth, fighting and feuding, beating the hell out of each other. At one point, they were both suspended because they got into a backstage brawl. Well, management saw what they had been doing. Management saw how hungry they both were, and they decided, hey, we'll put you both in the match against Drew McIntyre, the Intercontinental Champion. So Pete Dunn, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, triple threat match. That'll be our opening match up here tonight. Also on this episode, Chad Gable versus Rey Mysterio for the United States Championship. Now, for some reason, the game kept giving the United States Championship to Bobby Fish, and I don't understand why that was. I don't know if I had a match where I simulated or what happened there, um, but I did give it back to Rey Mysterio. We threw Chad Gable in because I like Chad Gable, um, and I think he's an American hero. Really, there's no reasoning behind this other than, like, I think it would be a good match. And, uh, yeah, so I threw it in there. I hope you guys are not upset about that. Uh, okay, so then we've got the tag team titles on the line, the Undisputed Era. And the New Day in an Extreme Rules match. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've had a couple of one-on-one -on -one matches. I believe it was Big E versus Bobby Fish and Xavier versus Kyle O'Reilly. I might be, ha I might have those mixed up, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> New Day came away with the victory in both of those. Therefore, they get a uh, they get a title match here at Halloween Havoc. Now, I'm thinking this one will probably be a pretty lengthy match. So this will probably be on its own episode. If it's not, then we'll go to this match. Whatever, it'll happen how it happens, but. The title, the 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 title matches. That's what I was about to say. The title matches. The big time title matches. The WWE Championship, of course. Kevin Owens. He's been going after this title for weeks, and Mustafa Ali just didn't want it to happen for some reason. Mustafa Ali has a vendetta against Kevin Owens. But Kevin Owens, he fought, he persevered, and here he is, here tonight, on Halloween Havoc. He is going to face Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. Of course, he did beat Randy Orton last week on SmackDown in order to uh, to finally uh, get this opportunity. And the big one from Monday Night Raw, the World Heavyweight Championship. We've got Brock Lesnar. We've got Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle, he's tapped out Brock Lesnar, what, twice now? We got AJ Styles and we got John Cena. It's a fatal four-way match for the World Heavyweight Championship. This one, I can almost guarantee you, is not going to disappoint. But let's go ahead. Let's jump into the matches. First up, we've got a triple threat match. Pete Dunn, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre. Intercontinental title is on the line. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Halloween Havoc, the first pay-per-view of Universe Mode. And it looks like our... Uh, it looks like the, it looks like it's actually correct. How about that? The entranceway is actually correct, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get things underway here at Halloween Havoc as we hit an intro here. Come on, Craig. Is it Craig or is it Greg? It's Greg, right? Greg Hamilton? Hit me with that intro, baby. Oh, 
Dolph Ziggler. This man, he has been fighting for this opportunity for quite some time now. Uh, I mean, him and him and Pete Dunne both. I, to be perfectly honest with you, Drew McIntyre hasn't done a, a heck of a whole lot in the last few weeks. He hasn't really defended that Intercontinental title. So it, it's going to be very interesting to see how this match plays out. Are Pete Dunne and Dolph Ziggler going to focus on each other more because of that bad blood that they have there? Or will, will the fact that they've been competing week in and week out... Okay, go ahead, intro, please. Okay, like I was saying, so will these two guys, will they face off against each other more so than focusing on Drew McIntyre? Or will it come into play that the fact that Drew McIntyre hasn't really been competing every week, will that slow him down and help the other two competitors in this match in, into winning this matchup against uh, and taking away the title from Drew McIntyre? And again, I, I mean, uh, I mean, it's it's been reiterated time and time again in triple threat matches throughout WWE's history, but I am I have to remind you of this is the champion does not need to be pinned in order to lose the title. Pete Dunne can pin Dolph Ziggler and win the Intercontinental title here tonight. And uh, it's not guaranteed that Drew McIntyre is going to get a rematch at that IC Championship. Is it likely? Yes, I would say it's like a 99% chance that he gets he gets that title match, uh, that title rematch. But it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. Nothing in this world is guaranteed. And Drew McIntyre, he understands that, but he knows he knows what mountain he needs to climb here tonight. And and, and I promise you. A man like Drew McIntyre, he's got he's got experience under his belt. He's been in this situation before. He's been champion before. He understands what it takes in order to get the job done. And he's not gonna he's not gonna sit around. He's not gonna mope. He's not gonna cry. He's he's coming into this match prepared as prepared as he can probably get. And I I, I promise you, he's gonna put up a fight. I mean, you just take one good look at this man. Uh, he's an absolute specimen. You know, I, I mean, I don't know really what to tell you about him. Just take a look. Look at the biceps, the triceps, the forearms, the backs, the, you know, the glutes, the whatever you want to look at on this man. He's got beautiful hair. Is it? Also, I mean, my God. He's coming into this match prepared. He knows what, he, what he's got to do. That's not to say that the other two guys don't know what's going on. Dolph Ziggler... I mean, how many times has he been Intercontinental Champion? 76? Like, seriously, you know? Dolph Ziggler's got a lot of experience under his belt as well. Pete Dunne is the one guy that I would I, I would really be maybe slightly worried about. Um, as he he does have experience, but these two other guys, they've got they've got quite a bit more experience than uh, than Pete Dunne has, but sometimes Sometimes experience is, uh, or, or sometimes lack of experience can be a good thing, though. You know, maybe Pete Dunne doesn't quite know what to expect in this match, and so he's going into this thing guns blazing because he doesn't know what is going to happen in this match, and he's going to lay it all out on the line. Maybe these other two guys, they know. They've been in triple threat matches before. Maybe they know, uh, you know, what's what's going to happen in this match, and maybe that that's going to not force them to hold back, but it's going to cause them to hold back subconsciously. Um, but uh, we're going to see what's what's about to happen here as we get things underway. The bell has been rung. Pete Dunne, just like I thought. Pete Dunne and Dolph Ziggler going right after each other. The bad blood. It wasn't going to hold off in this one as Dolph Ziggler. Now he's going to go for a quick victory here he, as he takes as he took down Pete Dunne. He's going to try to then choke out uh, a, a Drew McIntyre and run away with the IC title. But no such luck as now Pete Dunne takes control of the action here as he takes down... Uh, uh, What's that guy's name? Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> I forgot his name there for a second. Dolph now in bad in a bad way is now Pete Dunn trying to get a submission win here. Is this a submission triple threat match? Because I don't recall setting that stipulation. I know it's not. It's it's definitely a it's definitely a, a, a whatever, a regular triple threat match is. Now Pete Dunn, Dolph Ziggler both down. Drew McIntyre is the only man left standing inside the ring. So he takes a nice kick there at Pete Dunn. Deadlift, right? Oh, he just picks him right up, slams him right back down in the corners. Now he's gonna focus on Dolph Ziggler. This is this is exactly what uh, what I expected out of Drew McIntyre. As uh, I mean, he is the bigger of the men in this matchup. So 
what I what I am expecting from from Drew McIntyre is to kind of um kind of switch between the two guys, uh, especially when they're in the ring. As you can tell now, Dolph Ziggler getting back up to his feet as he's going to be entering the ring here. I would expect Drew to maybe take down Pete Dunne, but yeah, see, he takes him down, but then Dolph very smartly gets right on offense here against Drew McIntyre because Drew, with that size, he can he can take down Pete Dunne, then focus on Dolph for a couple of seconds, then back to Pete Dunne, and then back to Dolph, and he can kind of alternate between the two until he can inevitably just throw one out of the ring and get a pinfall on the other. But Dolph Ziggler, the, the veteran experience of Dolph Ziggler, ooh, God, that was a nice DDT there by Dolph. Dolph Ziggler, though, with that experience, he knows uh, uh, speed is uh, is going to come into play here for him, and that's uh, that that is inevitably what what ended up getting him into the advantage he is in a few seconds ago. Not now, that is for sure. As Dolph Ziggler finds himself on the mat with Pete Dunn, getting ready to maybe break the arm Ooh, or the shoulder. My God, that looked absolutely vicious. As Dolph Ziggler is on the mat, Drew McIntyre picking up Pete Dunn and absolutely clobbers him takes his head off as now Drew very smartly goes for a pinfall here on Dolph. One count and Drew McIntyre cannot win the match with a one count. He's got to win with a three count, baby. <clears throat> as he's now going to pick up Dolph like a dead-weighted sack of taters. Let's throw him down. Throw him to the side. Pete Dunn has no clue what's going on inside the ring now, but now he's going he's gonna to get right back up as Drew kicks Dolph right in the face there. I think he's making a mistake here. I think he maybe should have focused on oh no maybe not it's as as done now see there i i think that right there is a, is an example where you see the experience difference between dolph and d and, and, and pete dunn there where oh my god what a toss huh what a toss but if you notice before when dolph was outside of the ring and he came back in drew was focusing on pete dunn dolph ziggler got right in there he ran after drew and took the offense away from drew and he took advantage of the match. When Pete Dunne was outside of the ring, Drew McIntyre was was attacking Dolph Ziggler. Pete Dunne, he held off. He waited for Drew to finish what he was doing with Dolph, and then he 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 approached uh, Drew McIntyre, and that cost him. And now he is in a he's in a bad way here as he as he takes a licking from Drew McIntyre, and now he's taking a licking from Dolph Ziggler. And Dolph Ziggler could win this thing right here because of Pete Dunne's mistake. One, two, no, not even a two count. Pete Dunne kicks out at 1.9. Drew McIntyre back in the ring here. He's gonna throw Dolph off the ropes, go for a back elbow. Drew unable to hit that as Dolph Ziggler swings out of the way there. Now he's got a, a some sort of arm hold in. Drew McIntyre using that strength and that size it to his advantage there as he just absolutely pummels Dolph Ziggler in the midsection, and he just tosses him across the ring. Pete Dunn, oh, again, though. My God, what a headbutt. He might be out cold. This could be at one, two, and, oh, Pete Dunn able to kick out right before three. Drew McIntyre, he can't believe it. Maybe he's got a concussion because he just headbutted the absolute dog crap out of Pete Dunn. I had to think of a way to say that without cursing there, but he got through it. We got through it. Dunn, man, he's trying to get on the offensive, but he just cannot, he cannot seem to get his bearings under him. He just cannot seem to get anything going for him. I, I would be really surprised if Pete Dunn ended up winning this match. To be perfectly honest with you, the way things seem to be going for him, it just seems like he cannot get anything in offensively against either of these two men. It's like Drew has the size, Dolph has the speed. I would give Pete Dunn the you know the technical ability in this one. I think well, then again, Dolph man, he's he's quite the technical wrestler himself. I'm not re I I'm not really sure. Maybe the striking, maybe Pete Dunn has has really good striking over everybody else. But uh, you know, Dolph definitely has the speed. Drew has the size, and I think that's <clears throat> I think those two things definitely take um take the cake in terms of anything else, speed and size. Um when you're just looking at those kind of things. But I think that's I think that's what's costing Pete Dunn here. But he gets he gets a little offense in there. Misses a kick though. Again, there you go. There you see Speed working to the advantage of Dolph Ziggler and against Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn, he just cannot get anything in offensively. And it it might end up costing him the match. I wouldn't be surprised if Pete Dunn was the one ended Oh, angle slam there. I wouldn't be surprised though if Pete Dunn was the one that ended up getting pinned. Uh in order to, in order to, whatever, whether Dolph wins or Drew wins, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Pete Dunn was the one that ended up getting pinned. 
Drew McIntyre, he just stares at Dolph there. Like, what the hell are you even thinking? As he absolutely drives Dolph into the mat. One, two, and no! Dolph Ziggler still alive in this one. He kicks out at 2.9. Drew McIntyre setting him up. Pete Dunne, he's getting back up to his feet. Finally, Drew, though, he's going to drill Dolph Ziggler back into the mat there. Pinfall, not even a one count as Pete Dunne back up to his feet. Drew McIntyre is going to take down Pete Dunne there. Is he going to go for another pit? No, he's going to pummel Dolph Ziggler. Try to maybe knock him out. Maybe maybe take a little uh, energy out of Dolph there. Maybe now he's going to go for a pin. I, this is exactly where I would be going for a pin. No, he's going to he's gonna beat some sense into Dolph Ziggler here. A kick to the midsection <clears throat> as he picks him up. What's he got? Oh, a big chop there. I, I just don't understand why Drew wasn't going for a pin there. As now Dolph could win this thing with a sleeper hold. Pete Dunne taking his sweet time getting back into the ring. He's going to break up that sleeper hold, though. This is Pete. This could be Pete Dunne's time. I think I think Drew is out. If he could have gotten in, if he could have gotten in a few moves on on Dolph there, I think he really could have won that match right there. But Dolph now seems to be in in the in the driver's seat as he looks to maybe win this matchup after taking an, a, a beating from hell. I I mean he he damn near lost the match. Oh, a famous sir out of nowhere on Drew McIntyre. Pete Dunne seems to be reeling on the ropes. Pinfall here. This could be it. One, two, and. Three, just like that. Dolph Ziggler absolutely steals this one with the Famouser out of nowhere. My God, what a match. What a match that one was. Why is there no music? Shouldn't there be music here? Okay, that's all right. I don't care. Um, Yeah, come Dolph's... Oh, now it's playing. Dolph's music. Okay, whatever. Dolph Ziggler once again takes the Intercontinental Championship... Look at how stoked he is to be back on top of that mountain. I'm telling you right now, if Pete Dunne gives up after this, I would be absolutely shocked. I think Pete Dunne, uh, come Monday Night Raw, is going to be coming after Dolph Ziggler, as will, uh, as will Drew McIntyre because he just lost his IC championship. The shocking, I think the most shocking part is Drew was the one that ended up getting pinned. In this situation, he was the one that lost the IC title for himself. Let's go ahead. Let's jump to our next match. The United States Championship is on the line as Chad Gable. Chad Gable challenges. I got I got caught up on that. Chad Gable challenges Ray Mysterio. Here we go. Our second matchup of the night. Is it scheduled for one fall? Thank you, Greg. Craig? Greg. It's Greg. All right. Thank you. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Oh, baby. My God, if this ain't a theme song, I'll tell you right now, I'm dancing to it. Ooh. Mm. Mm -mm. This is a theme song, man. I love this theme song, and I miss Chad Gable being not Shorty G. Shorty G? Yes, yeah, Sh Chad Gable. That's right. Gable. Man, Chad Gable, he could have really been something. I remember a match he had with... um. With AJ Styles back on SmackDown when they first did that draft. And he absolutely killed it. And I thought from that moment on, he would be like getting a push and he would be like a top star. But he never did anything with him after that. And it's really disappointing. But he could be on the road here to uh, to superstardom as he takes down a former, as, as he takes down, as he takes on a former, uh, former world champion, former WWE champion, former tag team champion, cruiserweight champion, you name it. Rey Mysterio's damn near had every accolade he could possibly have. Royal Rumble, he's had every accolade he could he could pretty much have in the WWE and, and elsewhere. And elsewhere. Very accomplished professional wrestler. And he's not done yet, as you can tell, as he's the United States champion. And he's still in this thing. He's still, I, I mean, for a man of his age, to be moving the way that he is moving and competing at such a high level, it's, it's not, I don't want to say it's surprising. As we've got Kurt Angle in a World Heavyweight title match later on here tonight. Um, it's just... It, it, considering all of the problems that he had injury-wise uh, just, a, just a few short years ago, to be where he is right now is... Uh, I think that's the surprising part. Maybe not so much the age. I think the problems that he had injury-wise along with age 
Um, when you combine those two things together, this is a, this is a rather surprising uh, situation we're in here with uh, with Rey Mysterio. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna skip these because I just do we really need it? You know. Let's just get to the match here, ladies and gentlemen. Chad Gable, Rey Mysterio. We are underway. Chad Gable immediately taking down Rey Mysterio. I'm, I'm very intrigued to see how this one plays out as Chad Gable with a very extensive past in, in amateur wrestling, a very map-based technical style wrestler. Um, I would say he's very similar to Kurt Angle. Um, I mean, you just have to make that, that comparison. Um, but he's very map based, very technical. Rey Mysterio, of course, as we all know, very high speed, high flying, high octane, offensive um, wrestler. Um, so I'm very, I'm very curious to see. Ooh, just like that, right over the top rope, leg drop as as Chad Gable was hung up on the bottom rope there. But I'm very curious to see how this one plays out as these two guys go at it. Kick to the midsection there by Chad Gable as he's now going to take down Rey Mysterio once again. He's got him in a bit of a, a, a headlock there with his legs. He's going to pummel the, his, his, his elbow right there into the forehead of, of Rey Mysterio. That'll knock you out. You know, that'll, that'll send you for a loop. That'll, that'll get you loopy. That'll get you a concussion. That'll, uh, that'll definitely ruin your day, I'll tell you that much. Nice suplex there, though, by Chad Gable. Takes down Rey Mysterio once again. A lot of time being spent on the laying on the mat by Rey Mysterio here tonight as, as he gets picked up. Both of these these guys are. I, I didn't realize that Chad Gable was such a small guy until I saw him in the ring here with Rey Mysterio. I thought he was bigger than Rey Mysterio, but and maybe he is by just a little bit. As I'm going to plug my controller in here, just give me one quick second. All right, we are not plugged in yet, but we've got the cord in our hand and we are about to plug it in. Which way does this dang thing go in? Oh, it goes in the first way that I tried to put it in. Oh, okay, great. We got a okay. That's okay. No, we're not going to restart the match. We're going to continue the match. Okay. My sound just went absolutely incredibly loud. So that was fun. Um, okay. Chad Gable back in control here. Sorry about the, uh, the delay there guys, but, uh, Ooh, all right. See, that's, that's what I love to see. There is Chad Gable. He goes for a submission hold there exactly what you would expect. And Rey Mysterio gets out of it in the exact way you would expect. Rey Mysterio kip up right back at Chad Gable. Bulldog down goes Chad Gable. The speed might be too much for Chad Gable. Chad Gable, he he does actually wrestle. He's a very fast guy himself. He's just not as high flying. He's not flying through the air as much as Rey Mysterio is. He's a very fast wrestler, though. Once he gets going, I think it. I think the thing with Chad Gable is sometimes he, he moves slow early on in the matches. We've got a pinfall here. One count. Chad Gable kicks out at one, though. I think sometimes Chad Gable, he starts off slow, and as the match continues, he speeds up, he ramps up, and you start seeing a lot more out of Chad Gable a lot quicker. And I think as this match goes on, I think it goes into Chad Gable's favor. I think Rey Mysterio needs to use his speed to his advantage early on and, and try to win this match uh, as quickly as possible because I think once Chad Gable really starts to get that speed behind him along with that map-based... Um, that map based style that he has if Rey Mysterio is constantly laying on the mat he can't be flying around because he's laying on the mat you know what I'm saying so and because Rey Mysterio he's not as technically advanced as as Chad Gable is he's not going to be able to get out of many situations he did not too long ago with that head scissors but it, you're not going to see it as much as you will with Chad Gable uh, because Chad Gable he does have that background uh, in, in amateur wrestling but so far, I, I think this thing, I think this thing, I think we've seen a lot more of Chad Gable here tonight than we have Rey Mysterio so far. And I'll be honest with you, I think that's surprising. I thought, I thought Rey Mysterio would come out in this thing. I thought he would come out guns blazing. I thought he would use his speed and his, his high flying and take advantage of this match early on. And then Chad Gable would ground him and he would, he would figure out Rey Mysterio's play. And he would he would use that slow methodical pace and and slow the slow the match down and then speed it up at his own pace using his own style. But that's not the way things have gone. As Chad Gable has, I don't want to say dominated Rey Mysterio because we've seen some offense. But with that suplex there, I mean it's been maybe now what three or four minutes since we've seen any sort of offensive maneuver from Rey Mysterio. Is now he he gets right back into it there again with the speed. He comes right back into it. Back-to-back -back moves there. He's going to go up to the top rope here. Maybe hit a splash. 
Is that what he's gonna? He's about to hit. Oh, yep, a big time splash there. Is he gonna go in for the pinfall? No, it looks like maybe he might have hurt his midsection. Maybe cracked a rib on that one. He might be hurt, but he's gonna keep on going as he kicks Chad Gable in the shoulder, maybe the head, maybe the chin, the face. I'm not really too sure. Couldn't really see. Chad Gable was in the way there. Nice little tilt to whirl into an arm bar. But Chad Gable right there, able to reach for the rope and grab it as he's going to have to break the hold. Picks him right back up. Hurricane Rana, there we go. Throws Chad Gable across the ring with a Hurricane Rana. Chad Gable wisely rolling to the outside of the ring. He's going to use the ropes to pick himself back up. Rey Mysterio just watching as Chad Gable... Oh, and then he's going to take a right hand. It looks like... Did Rey Mysterio get cocky there? Did he get too much offense going in and he got cocky? He got a little too confident. Nice suplex into a, a bridge. No pinfall, though. He's going to pick Rey Mysterio back up. Another suplex. I think that's a fisherman. Is that a fisherman suplex? I believe that's a fisherman suplex. Rey Mysterio, though, he's going to go right back into it. Hurricane Rana into the ropes. This is going to be a 6-1-9 here. Oh, my God. All of a sudden, Rey Mysterio could win this matchup. He's going to go for the pin right out of the 619. Pinfall here. One, two, and three. Just like that, I would say Rey Mysterio just stole that match and retains the United States Championship. Wow. I am actually surprised. Back to back matches, I'm surprised by. That's not how I expected that match to go at all. At all. I mean, it looked like Chad Gable. I don't know how he messed that. I mean, he had that thing in the bag. I mean, he had Rey Mysterio beaten. Right? Like, I'm not... I don't think I'm that crazy to say that Chad Gable had Rey Mysterio beaten here tonight. And and Rey Mysterio, he just comes out. He just turns it to another gear. Boom, 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 boom. 619 and it's over just like that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the first episode of Halloween Havoc. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Jobber Nation. This has been your boy, Jobber Nation. Bye.